I am getting ready to go outside and milk and I'm going to take you along with me and show you my whole process. But before I do that, let's talk a little bit about making butter. I love making butter and that was actually one of my biggest reasons for choosing to go with Jersey cows. I have two jerseys. Actually, I have three jerseys right now. I have two cows and one heifer calf. And I chose jerseys because they produce a ton of cream. Um, their butterfat content is just, just great. So, yeah, let's talk about, about butter, about making butter, the different ways you can do that. Let's see. So, I cook with animal fats pretty much exclusively. I love using animal fats. Saturated fats are just um, much more stable inside of the body, so they come from inside of an animal. They're used to being um, in a warm, hot environment. <laughs> so when we ingest them, then they're not, they don't um, become unstable as quickly as unsaturated fats do. So lots of animal fats around here, um, whether it's butter or lard or tallow. Um, I save baking grease and that's how I do my cooking. So as far as butter goes, butter made from raw milk is a superfood. Um, it's really rich in fat soluble vitamins, really rich in minerals, things that we really need like copper, selenium, and there are a few ways that you can make butter from raw milk. So butter is just cream that is mixed up enough to where the liquids and the fats separate. That's all it is. All you need to make butter is cream, and you can just get cream from the store and make butter with that. It will be just fine. You're not gonna get as much of the um, health benefits as when you use raw milk straight from the cow or when you culture your cream like I'm gonna show you today, but you can just use cream from the store. So if you wanna try that, I don't know if that would be, um, worth it as far as if that would be a good bang for your buck because I think it might be cheaper just to buy the butter than buy the cream from the store. I'm not sure you'd have to price that out. But yeah, let's talk about um, let's talk about making cultured butter. So there are a few different ways, like I said, that you can make butter from, from raw cream. The first way, and I think this is probably the most common way, is to just use um, fresh cream. So when you milk your cow, you're going to put the milk in the fridge right away and let the cream rise to the top, which is called cream lining. I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later. And then once the cream rises, just skim it off. I use a ladle. Um, you can get a cream separator, but they're like these big clunky machines. They're really hard to clean, so I hear, and just take up a lot of space. I think a ladle works just fine. So skim your cream off the top of your um, milk with a ladle. And then essentially, like I said, you just, to make butter, you just want to agitate the cream enough to separate the fat from the liquid. You can do that by just putting the cream in a jar and shaking it. If you shake it long enough, it will turn into butter. You can also use a blender. You can use a butter churn. Um, my favorite favorite way to make butter, which is what I'm going to show you today, is using a food processor. I like it because if you use the S-Blade, then you can take the blade out and scrape all the butter out when you're done, and it contains the mess really well. There's no waste. So that's, that's just my uh, preference. You can also use a KitchenAid stand mixer. I've done that before. That's a really popular way. But even if you have the guard around the bowl, um, it's such a mess. You have to cover it with a towel and then your towel soaked and you end up wasting some butter. So um, I, I don't really like using my KitchenAid stand mixer. I like using my food processor. So that's, that's how you can make butter, the tools you can use. And, and the most common way is just to use fresh cream. Um, then the second way to make butter from raw milk is to clabber your milk. So take fresh milk that has never been refrigerated and just set it at room temperature. Cover it, set it at room temp, and let it clabber. So it's gonna get really thick and kind of sour, and the cream will rise to the top. Then when the cream is has risen to the top, then you're gonna do the same butter making process. So just skim it with a ladle and make butter that way. So that is clabbered butter. And you're, you're gonna get more, um, some more cultures and, and good beneficial bacteria that way. But my favorite way that I'm gonna show you today is cultured butter. 
And to do that, you want to use fresh cream. Um, and I'll show you this process. So fresh cream, add in some cultured buttermilk, let it sit out at room temp, and really just develop those cultures, and then make butter using whatever whatever tool you like. So those are three ways that you can make butter from raw milk, but I'm gonna quit talking and um, yeah, let's go milk the cow and get started. Cows are actually really smart and they do really well with routine. My girls totally know the drill by now. I whistle every time I'm walking down the lane out of my house and they know I'm coming. They know what to expect and where to go. This is a very old farm. Pretty much nothing here is new. So I don't have a dedicated milking stanchion or milking area, but this old loading chute and head gate works just fine. I just use some water and lavender in a spray bottle to clean off her udders and teats before we get started. This here was a good day. She wasn't that dirty, so it was pretty fast. And then once I'm done with that, I express a little bit of milk out of each teat just to kind of clean everything out before I actually start collecting milk. It usually takes me about 10 minutes to completely milk a cow out. Now, this one I'm milking here is Sally. Like I said, I have two cows, but Sally is about five months pregnant and I'm getting ready to let her dry up. She's not giving me that much milk anymore, but what she is giving me is largely cream. So that's why I've continued to milk her. So once I'm done milking, I strain the milk threw a cheesecloth into a clean gallon jar and then put it in the fridge right away so that all of the cream can rise to the top, which is called cream lining. And I'll show you that in just a second. I've got a few more gallons in the fridge, just like this with big, thick cream lines on top. I'm just going to use a ladle and skim all that off. Most of the time I wait until I have about a gallon of cream and then just have a big butter making day where I make a bunch of butter all at once. But sometimes if I have some cream I need to use, I'll just make like a quart at a time, which I'll show you right here. So now I have about a quart of fresh cream that I skimmed off of this gallon of milk and I'm going to culture this cream. I got my buttermilk starter culture from Cultures for Health. It just comes in a little pack like this, and all you do is sprinkle this little pack into a cup of fresh milk, let it sit, and then you have cultured buttermilk. It's that simple. But if you don't want to order buttermilk starter culture, you could just get buttermilk from the store. Just get cultured buttermilk from the store, and that will work just fine. So when you're going to be culturing cream, the ratio is about three tablespoons of buttermilk to one quart of cream. So I'm going to add three tablespoons of buttermilk into this quart here, and then just let this set at room temperature for a day or so, maybe two days. I think I've let it go as long as three days. I'm not really sure, but it can sit for a few days in culture. And the long heart cultures, it's really just gonna going to deepen that buttery flavor. The great thing about cultured buttermilk is that you don't have to keep buying starter culture and making it. You can just save the buttermilk that's left over after butter making and use it next time. So now I am just going to put a lid on this, shake it up a little bit, and let this cream sit out on my counter until tomorrow or the next day. I don't know, we'll see and then I will make butter. The process of butter making is really just agitating the cream enough to get the fats to separate from the liquids. I've tried a lot of different ways. You can even just shake cream in a jar and you will get butter eventually, but using a food processor is my favorite way because it contains the mess and you can take the blade out and then get all of the butter out of the bowl. You don't waste anything. Cream that is at room temperature will separate into butter very, very quickly. However, if your cream has been in the fridge, I would let it sit out on the counter for about an hour to warm up just a bit before you start. Otherwise, it will take forever to separate into butter. Your cream will actually turn into whipped cream first, and then you will be able to see very clearly as the butter fat separates from the buttermilk. 
Once that happens, turn your food processor off, strain everything through a fine mesh strainer, and you want to get as much buttermilk out as possible, which will make the washing process faster. And remember, you can save this buttermilk and use it next time to culture your next batch of cream. When you're finished straining, put your butter into a bowl and run some very cold water over it and just kind of knead it to get any remaining buttermilk out. You want to do this until the water runs clear and it's important that it's cold water because you don't want to use warm water. Your butter will then melt and that's no good. So once you have washed your butter, add in some good quality sea salt. I love using Redmond Real Salt. I buy it by the bucket between butter making, cheese making, and baking and cooking everything from scratch. I go through a ton of salt. Once your salt is mixed in, now you can put your butter in a mold. Well, actually you could just serve it right away, or you can put it in a mold, or you can shape it like I'm doing here with a butter paddle. I will link, this butter paddle is actually handmade by I think my husband's great grandpa, but I'll link a butter paddle in the description box below. I like to shape my butter and then cut it into half cup sticks, which makes for quick and easy measuring for baking and cooking. I wrap a lot of it and store it in the freezer and it will stay good for several months that way. Be sure to click subscribe before you go. I make videos on motherhood, homesteading, and life here on our fifth generation farm.